Carolyn Doobie here, and today I am giving you a look inside my head, so to speak, as I make this colorful painted envelope. You'll see that I have no plan as I make this, how the oops that used to stop me and make me give up actually took me to the end result that I really like. So let's get on with it. First step is just to put a nice sloppy, juicy coat of gesso on it. I'm using a Catalyst mini blade to do it, which basically means I don't have to clean out a brush from it. This clearly isn't precise. It's just about getting a base that I can work on. Now that it's dry, I'm just going to take a marker and sort of scribble journal on this so it's no longer a blank page. I wanted a big shape on there, so kindergarten style, folded the paper in half and cut out a heart for myself. I'm going to use both parts of it. This part I'm going to use as a stencil. And I found this great neon green paint I think it's a Blitcrylic neon paint. It was very affordable and I'm going to tell you right now this didn't turn out the way I expected. This paint was much more translucent than what I expected or really what I just wanted it to be. So first time using it didn't go quite as I wanted so I thought if I added more paint it would look a little bit darker but not really. Here it is all dry and now I'm going to put the heart mask back on top of it. little repositionable tape there to hold it in place. Next, I grabbed my building stencil from over at Stencil Girl, and I just kind of laid it on there randomly so it's covering up the heart. And while I'm playing today with this, I don't want to think very hard. I don't want to make things super precise, so I'm not going to. Grabbing a couple of colors of Amsterdam acrylic, but this works with any acrylic paint. And I'm just going to put it directly onto that catalyst blade, and then I'm just going to sort of smoosh it, slide it into the spots on the stencil. Decided to do one half blue and one half turquoise. And there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of felt like it. I'm going around the outside of that paper heart that I'm using as a mask. And I'll tell you that as I looked at this, I kind of went, you know, I don't really like that with one color on one side and one color on the other. So, oops. Well, all is not lost. This is just an outstanding opportunity that presented suddenly. So all I'm going to do is take the colors and work on the opposite sides of it to change how the colors will look. So I'm going to sort of blend that turquoise and blue together so that it becomes more of one color. And now my oops has led me to a more interesting complex color than what I'd originally planned. And I don't want to just have this around the heart, so I want to put it on another section of the envelope. And I put it up here, and I'm going to tell you right now that this is another oops. As soon as I pulled this off, I went, oh, that's not what I really wanted. And you know what? It's an opportunity. It's going to take me somewhere else. That said, it doesn't mean I'm going to get where I want to go with it right away. It may take a couple of layers before I'm happy with it. I let it dry mostly, and then I came in, twisted the stencil so that the pattern doesn't line up, so I get more pattern on top, coming in with a contrasting color, and I'm going to add another layer of color. Every little area isn't colored in, and that's what I want. And letting that kind of dry, I'm going to come in with yet another layer, twisting that stencil one more time, and I'm going to come in this time with a light pink. Don't know how this is really going to look was kind of what I was thinking as I did it. And you know what? I really liked how it turned out. You'll notice I didn't let this dry at all for this layer. Decided I had that bright green under there, so I'm just putting little hints and touches of green. Not a lot, because frankly, I don't really like the green with it. I really don't like that neon green with the colors I've chosen. So I had to find some way to get it to fit. Look at that, like, ugh. So I put that paint on there thinking I could rescue it, but no. <laughs> it's just not going as planned <laughs> at all. Can we just say oops, oops, and more oops with this one? But it'll be salvageable. I can get it to work somehow if I can get the paint to come out of the tube. Now the paint wouldn't come out for me and I should have taken that as a hint because when I got the yellow to come out, it was ugh, Did not like that at all. Oops, oops. Ugly oops. So I brought in some heavy bodied white. When I got ready to make this envelope, if I'd tried to think ahead to all these layers that I was going to put down to get the look that I was happy with at the end, I think my brain would have just sort of imploded on itself. Well, now it's back to dealing with that first original oops, that green heart that just hasn't come together for me yet. So I added some high flow paint to this 
And the nice part about this is it was gave me a very translucent look compared to a very thick, heavy paint so that some of that green can still come through. One of the really cool things for me about an oops, that outstanding opportunity that presented suddenly is that it takes me places I'm not thinking or planning about. It lets me be completely free in play because no matter what happens, I can always add more to it, add another layer, and knowing that I can just go with the oops, it takes all the pressure off so that I can just have fun playing and experimenting and having fun. Because for me, it's about the process, it's about the fun. That's why I keep coming back again and again to mixed media, to art journals, and everything else that I do in the studio. I wanted to put some words in it, something, you know, wise and wonderful, and I was just kind of stuck. So what I did is grabbed a random page out of a book, ripped it out, and then looked for words or phrases within that page that went together, that went with something I wanted to say with this heart. It's called Found Poetry, and it totally helped me get out of my head because I was thinking way too hard about what words I was gonna use. Put all those on with some gel medium. Now it's time to deal with one of those really early oops. Remember when I put that paint up in that top left corner? Well, I really didn't like how it worked. So I grabbed this stencil by Michelle Ward and I decided to just put a dark blue on there to make it pop. This is exactly what I need right there to fix it. And when I looked at it, I kind of went, oh, it just kind of looked like a mess there. Well, that just means another oops. So I thought I'll put some white around it. Yeah, that was, I was going to color around that with a pencil. No, I'm not that patient. So I decided <laughs> I'm just going to cover the whole thing in white paint. But oops, I didn't really like it with that much white on it. So that just means I deal with it and a little bit of water and I peel off some of the paint. So this is oops after oops after oops. Now I'm going to put that stencil right back as best I can. I'm going to try and line it up to the exact same spot where it was before. And I'm just going to stencil it again. I am using a foam sponge here, a uh, cotton yeah, cosmetic sponge. There's the word I'm looking for. And after seeing Mary Beth use those in her webinar, I have just fallen back in love with the good old cosmetic sponge with stencils again. And so now comes the final fiddling. The little touches here and there, adding little bits of color wherever it was kind of missing. It's those final touches. While you're watching me do that, I'm going to do my shameless plug part here. I would love it if you would subscribe to my newsletter, if you'd pop on over to the blog and say hello. Perhaps find me on Facebook. And let's not forget good old Google Plus and the community called A Colorful Playground, where everyone is welcome to share their art and play while we all learn to get around and figure out how this Google Plus thing works. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey and this oops-filled play in the studio today.